So the crew's meeting up and Eric had the great idea to go to Reverie, which is, I mean, it's an awesome coffee house, but it's so loud. So I guess Eric just doesn't want to hear anything we have to say, you, is what I imagine. You you go on this, one? this is cool. It's super cool and it wraps around the other side. Really? It's a really cool place. But it's so loud. I love this place. They're sitting outside. Look. Yeah. <laughs> it gets packed too. People, people prepare like yourself. It. Prepare yourself. What? I can't hear you. Just moving up. Make sure, make sure you get my left bicep in this shot. I've really been working out lately. I should get a nice. So the meeting today went actually pretty well. We are usually very bad at keeping on track. So there's two new characters in this mess I call my life. Colby and Brayden. I've known Colby for a while. He introduced me to Brayden. Him and Brayden were looking to do pretty much the exact same thing Eric and I are looking to do. So we're like, hey, let's not call it two things. Let's just put them both together. And so Finding the Flame has two new people. to get good content. I apologize. I had nothing the entire day besides a lot of pancakes. That's all I had. So sorry about that. But today I want to hit on two things. Today's been a juicy day. Today's been a day of good solid topics, good solid readings, and the homily was amazing today. So okay, what do I want to hit on first? Okay, so first off, that was, wow, I almost made that look athletic. Okay, first off, the readings. So. Okay. Damn it, now that I should just cut it. I should just cut it, that's what I should do. The book that Eric gave me about St. Teresa, amazing. I've been reading it, I'm like halfway through now, so I did not quite finish it in three days, but that's all right. In the chapter that I just read, the priest talked about St. Teresa's inner life and how she really didn't feel God. It was, it's like blows my mind because like she did so much good work for the poor and everything she did and everybody who talked to her and saw her were like, wow, God must be living with inside of her. Like she must have an amazing inner spiritual life. She described it as terrible, as she feels abandoned by God. I expect so much from God. Like every time I go to mass, I want a good feeling. I want to be excited that I'm there. And St. Teresa did what she did on this earth and didn't feel any of that for like, what, 40 years or whatever the legend says. <laughs> okay, this is like my 10th time trying to record this because I keep going too deep and then I'm like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's just, let's just bring it back. Let's just bring it back to what I understand. Okay, desolation is a time of despair, a time of your life that is hard to pray, that you don't feel God's presence. You don't feel God in anything you do. That's what desolation is. This is what Mother Teresa, also, I think I said St. Teresa when I was back there. It's Mother Teresa. This is what Mother Teresa experienced for like four years of her life, that's what people say. For a majority of her life, she is crazy that a woman could live her life for God so entirely, but then still have those thoughts of like, wow, God might not even exist. Like that, that just blows my mind. Anyways, here's a reason why desolation does not have to be a time of despair and of discomfort and of just like, oh, I just wanna get back to consolation and actually experience God. Because desolation is a time where God allows you to dive into his love even deeper. 
So the best way I can, like, as I was reading this, I imagine, um, like, my parents. They can, they can be in the same room, not talk to each other, not even, like, look at each other or anything, but they just have this intimate connection. They have this love that's just, like, unreal, and they can just experience that and be in the moment and like not feel anything they can literally just not feel anything they just know their relationship is so intimate and so pure and beautiful that it's just there what he wants you to experience is a love without feelings a love without emotion a love so consistent that it does not rely on how well you're feeling it's a give 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 kind of love It's so freaking cool. So freaking cool. So in a, in a sense, I'm saying that when you're in desolation, when you can't really feel God, you have the chance to love him even deeper. 